Members, the right on the board for Lord Mayor. City of Adelaide Council meeting on Tuesday, 9th of October 2018. The Lord Mayor is in the chair. This council meeting will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by council, including transferring outside of Australia. The red light to my right indicates that the meeting is being filmed and streamed. Council acknowledges that we are meeting on the traditional country of the Kaurna people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respect to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land. We acknowledge they are of continuing importance to the Kaurna people living today. We also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who are present today. Council acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Light in determining the site for Adelaide and the design of the city with its six squares and surrounding belt of continuous parklands, which is recognised on the National Heritage List. It's one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning heritage. Members, ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Welcome. Members, welcome to the uh, meeting of council on Tuesday the 9th of October 2018. Um, can I please acknowledge that um, we have an apology from um, Councillor Corbell Moore, uh, otherwise we have a full complement of councillors with us, soon to be. Um, members, can I also please acknowledge uh, a very special but nonetheless a very sad acknowledgement that Quentin Kennehan passed away on the weekend, as you are all aware. I'm going to speak very briefly about Quentin. Quentin could be variously described as an entertainer, an actor, actor, a disability advocate, and of also, of course, most recently, a City of Adelaide candidate. But I think, I think we'd most describe Quentin as a very decent guy. Um, he really became a household name at the age of seven when he appeared in a Mike Willisey program, which went national. He's performed at the Adelaide Fringe Festival. Um, he hosted his own celebrity, celebrity interview show. He released an autobiography in recent years called Not All Superheroes Wear Capes. Starred as Corpus Colossus in the Mad Max movie. Nominated as a candidate for area council in the city of Adelaide. He's been a long-term advocate for people with disability. Described as brave, witty, resilient, caring, ambitionate, ambitious, and most of all, very passionate for the community of the city of Adelaide. And I'm sure members, you'll all join me in expressing that Quentin will be missed. I think we'll give him a round of applause. Thank you very much, members. Councillor Clarence. Lord Mayor, I just wondered whether you'd also like to know, acknowledge the passing of Frank Ford, father of the Fringe, and also um, City of Adelaide um, awardee for Person of the Year. Um, I certainly would, and thank you very much, Councillor Clarehan. Members, can I equally um, also acknowledge the passing of Frank Ford AM, who is generally uh, described as the father of the Adelaide Fringe? and the contribution that Frank has made over a protracted number of years to the culture of the City of Adelaide, the community of the City of Adelaide, in fact, the very fabric of the City of Adelaide is indeed equally quite phenomenal. And I'm sure Frank is deeply missed by many already. And uh, I think we give Frank a round of applause too. Thank you, Councillor Um 
Members, we'll go to item four on our agenda this evening, which is a confirmation of minutes, which was your last meeting, meeting held on the 25th of September 2018. Um, can I have a move to adopt those minutes? Moved by Councillor Wilkinson, seconded by Councillor Malani. Members, do you have any questions or queries about those minutes? We don't, I'll put those for adoption, those in favour, those against, and we will carry that item. Thank you, members. Members, item five, we don't have any public forums or deputations this evening, and nor in item six do we have any petitions. Um, members, we do with regards to item seven, which is advice from the Adelaide City Audit Committee. Um, members, we have an alternate recommendation before you, CEO. I might ask you, or possibly through Rudy Deco, to explain the rationale for this alternate recommendation, if you may, because it does differ, members, from what is cited in the papers which have been distributed. CEO, would yourself or Rudy Deco care to speak to this matter? Thanks, Lord Mayor. Rudy, could you come forward just to explain? Thanks. Through to Lord Mayor, um, an alternative recommendation was indeed prepared to clarify the extent of the Order Committee. Um, the first one relates to um, the um, uh, policy which uh, the Order Committee recommended for Council to adopt. This is a Treasury policy. However, because of being in caretaker mode, that's then um, recommended for the next Council term. Um, the other one relates to the sign-off of the financial statements, again, to clarify the position there and to make sure that the intent of the audit, audit committee is um, clearly represented. Okay. Can we have that again, please? Rudy? So, uh, through the um, Lord Mayor, the um, audit committee, the proposed new treasury policy was presented and the audit committee indeed recommended for council to adopt that. But because we're in caretaker mode at the moment, we can't adopt any uh, policies. So therefore it's intended for the new council to adopt that policy and um, align with the recommendation of the audit committee. And the second part, Rudy, please. Uh, the second one. Um, the second one relates to the consolidated financial statements uh, where the original recommendation didn't quite make it clear that there is authorisation for the CEO and the Lord Mayor to certify them. So to make it absolutely clear that that's um, the recommendation of the council. And just noting members that in this recommendation, this fact is it's the reverse order. So the first thing you'd be doing is uh, part one, I guess, which would be uh, the financial statements, which would be authorising the CEO and myself to certify them. The second part talks to the Treasury policy, and that's the part which we brought back to the next term of council. That's correct, isn't it, Rudy? That's correct. Yep. Councillor Martin, question? Yes, Lord Mayor. Can I just clarify then, what has changed is the authorisation, which is the section three, which applies to part one, and according to what was just said in relation to the Treasury policy, that too is a noting rather than adopting. Those are the only changes. Okay. That is correct, Councillor. So, Councillor Marnie, you had hand up first. You, you're moving as printed with the recommendation. I look for a second of members. Councillor Martin, you had your hand up second. Councillor Marnie, do you wish to speak to the matter? Is that my right, Lord Mayor? Councillor Martin? Yeah, Lord Mayor, just a, a brief remark to say that uh, I, uh, I'm delighted that the administration and the audit committee uh, have seen the value of Council adjusting its treasury policy with regard to uh, divestment. It's a good outcome. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Mayne, you had your hand up. Do you wish to speak to the matter? Members, I look to you. Councillor Clarehan. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I just noted one of the recommended changes um, in the policy was around borrowings. And uh, page five, I think it says that uh, there's going to be a section on borrowing from our Treasury policy where um, timeframes are going to be removed, as in if borrowings are less than 10 million, they'll have a repayment time frame of six years. If borrowings are more than 10 million, they will have a repayment time frame to 10 to 15 years. And th this will be replaced with um, 
repaint a, a, a statement that says the capital requirements uh, assume repayment of principal and interest over 20 years, including major infrastructure projects and land banking. Um, and I just wondered whether there's someone could provide an explanation as to why that's been changed. Certainly, Councillor. CEO, can I refer that matter to you, please? Thanks, Steve. Through you, Lord Mayor, um, what the Treasury policy is seeking to do is to provide, I guess, maximum flexibility from the Council's perspective. So in, in instances where Council would choose to go past those timeframes, in those instances we're bound by them, but the way that we're approaching our borrowing policy or a, a, the way we're approaching borrowings is to give us maximum flexibility through either fixed term and or CADs, which are those access on demand um, credit facilities. So what we're proposing to do there is the 20 years is reflective of general practice around long serving assets. Like if you were talking about community based assets, you'd normally borrow over a maximum term of about 20 years. We can always bring that term in and we would always seek to minimise borrowings on the balance sheet at any given point in time. And also very much about other um, forms of debt that are backed by a business plan, that the borrowings policy reflects the term of that investment and the reasons that we'd be taking it. So giving us flexibility and the ability to adapt to the situation is intent. Okay, one more And I guess that includes that intergenerational um, capital investments. One might choose to repay them over a longer period of time. Thank you. Um, there was another um, section of the report that talked about um, the breach of our borrowing, um, bear with me, sorry, um, breach of prudential limits will be reported immediately to the CEO, um, but not until not to the council um, until the next quarter. So that could be a period of three months. Um, can you explain whether that would be best practice or the reasons for that? I guess in essence, when we're looking at those particular prudential limits, they're as much about forward looking as they are about the exact point in time. So a lot of the decision making in relation to whether we're going to exceed or how far within them or the appetite of the chamber is set at long term financial plan and at budget adoption time. So that, that um, reporting mechanism has been built in just to increase the level of governance and stewardship to add a reporting um, aspect to it that should for some reason they be breached and it wasn't part of something Council's already seen, which would normally be the case, that we would actually make sure there's a report back to the Chamber on a quarterly basis that identifies that. And just further to that, I didn't realise it was addition because I guess that gives three months or maybe one to three months then for Council to either cut back on capital spending or other spending and or call on any invested funds, draw down on invested funds. Would that be right? Three Remedi minutes. In other words, remedial action. Through you, Lord Mayor, um, it's well, hypothesising a bit, I think. So it depends on the nature of why we're in the position, whether it's a clear decision of council that you've chosen to go that way or whether there is an unforeseen item that's actually requiring our attention in that regard. So it totally depends on the circumstances. Yeah, thank you. And I'm very happy to see that it's an addition. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Members, any further debate or questions? Councillor Mulani? Members, I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry. Thank you, members. Members, I'll take you directly to item 8.1, which I've been advised is relatively procedural, but you may have questions with regard to it. This is the Gordon Place Road Closure, which most specifically pertains to section 32 of the Road Traffic Act. Members, you've got a recommendation before you as printed. Do I have a mover? Moved by Councillor Moran, seconded by Councillor Slama. Councillor Moran, do you wish to speak to this matter? No, I don't. Councillor Slama? Members, I look to you. Summing up, Councillor Moran? Members, on the floor, those in favour? Those against? Item carried. Thank you, members. Um, members, 8.2, which is a 12-month update which you have before you uh, with regards to the Adelaide Parklands Event Management Plan, or otherwise known as the APLIM. Uh, members, you have a recommendation to note. I look for a mover. Councillor Hender, seconded by Councillor Moran. Councillor Hender, do you wish to speak to the matter? Councillor Moran? No. Members, any questions, queries or comments? Councillor Martin. Quick question, Lord Mayor. With regard to paragraph 12 and the administration's note that noise levels were non-compliant in at least the cases of the Croquet Club and the Fringe Club, could the CEO advise if either event or any other event 
faced a financial penalty such as a loss of bond. CEO. Three will have been no, no penalties are applied. Thank you, Councillor. Um, members, do I have any further questions or queries? Councillor Clarahan. Just a quick question about the, um, there was a statement about the ambient noise levels of a number of locations um, where the noise, ambient noise was actually higher than the targeted noise level. And I thought, goodness, was there a plane going over? Was there heavy traffic? What would cause ambient noise levels to be higher than the targeted noise levels? See you. Thanks, Claire. Um, as Councillor um, has indicated, it's precisely those type of noises that do, can be picked up through noise monitoring. So it's termed ambient noise, but it's ongoing general noise that people hear every day in the city. And just um, and one more question, Lord Mayor. Um, there was always the issue around Royal Croquet Club being blamed for noise, when I don't believe they are in fact guilty of the noise. I believe it was another event uh, on the riverbank that was guilty of the excessive noise. Um, have we, are we doing anything to actually better identify the noise source? See you. Yeah, three, Lord Mayor. That is one of the reasons that we, we didn't apply any fines this current year because there's a lot of work we need to do to improve noise monitoring and we've got some processes in place that, for this coming year to ensure that we're more accurate and we're able to determine exactly where the noise is coming from. And I'd just like to say thank you for all the work that you're doing on this. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you, Councillor. Members, any further debate? In absence of, I hand you back to the mover, Councillor Hendon. Members, I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry. So we carry item 8.2, which takes us directly onto item 8.3, members, which is a proposal for Part 12 to note and authorise as your recommendation. I look to you, members. Deputy Lord Mayor Vershaw, seconded by Councillor Clarahan. Deputy Lord Mayor, would you wish to speak to this matter? Yeah. Councillor Clarahan? Uh, no, I only, to say, only to say that it's a new event and it looks very, very exciting. It certainly does. Any debate, members? DLM summing up. Members, I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry item 8.3. Sorry, Councillor Wilkinson. You... Okay. okay, you're an early mover, Councillor Wilkinson. Well done. So I'll now call 8.4 and I will look to you, Councillor Wilkinson, to move 8.4. I'll seek a sec. You're moving as printed, Councillor? Yes. I'll look to a seconder, Councillor Moran. Councillor Wilkinson, do you wish to speak to the matter? Thank you. Um, yes, having looked carefully at the uh, uh, report and submission that our uh, uh, planning staff have prepared, I think they've done an excellent job in. Uh, in, uh, covering this very important topic and I just bring members attention to page 36 which is our response where there's a topic that says privatisation of planning. Above all the City of Adelaide does not support the privatisation of planning decisions. The core function of planning is to enhance and protect the public interest. And I think that's really well said. And, and fundamental to this. It's a very measured document, but fundamentally we are saying that we do not support the privatisation of planning which is supposed to serve the public interest. <coughs> and given that I work within the development sector, uh, if that it's building certification has been privatised, but that's about building code issues. There can only be so much harm done that way. But with planning decisions, one could have profound um, uh, outcomes which um, would be very detrimental uh, to the public interest. If, if the person assessing the, um, the work was actually engaged by the applicant and the nature of private practice being that I'm in it, is that those practitioners who are inclined to say yes to whatever and come up with professional justifications and arguments 
as planning consultants. They're going back for applicants now, but they're not final decision makers, they're just advocates. But if those same advocates were became the decision makers, it's like putting a wolf in, in charge of the hen house. So um, I just commend the, um, the good work and this excellent report that's been prepared and I uh, hope that um, uh, state parliamentarians uh, heed the warnings therein. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Moran, you seconded? No. Councillor Hender. Yeah, I just wanted, uh, I wanted to endorse what Councillor Wilkinson said, um, uh, and particularly in relation to this um, privatisation. I, I also want to thank the administration for the hard work on this. But one of the things that um, is apparent to me is that this has become such a complex area that it's extremely hard, even for people who are across the area well, to keep it, to have a proper grip on it. And um, and it's, I think, really important that us, uh, that us as a council and local government generally, perhaps through the local government association um, and through every other mechanism, really pursue this issue. I've, I've um, said in this chamber before that my observation as a someone external to the planning world prior to my got involvement in local government is that, that um, consultants in this area are worse than lawyers and that to the extent to which they prostitute themselves for their clients, they really are. And I think if we privatise um, uh, the planning process, then nothing will be rejected. Nothing will be rejected. So I very much hope as a departing councillor that the council, this council continues to prosecute this position at its highest, because if we don't have a say about it, if we as the capital city don't speak up about it, then we can't expect other local government sectors to speak up about it. And I think this is a really vital, vital issue for the future of our state. So I just, um, I'm just i very pleased with this paper, but what I really want to make sure is that we prosecute it with full force, that we, that we attend every possible um, uh, place where we can speak about it, and that we perhaps um, consider joining with local government or some of the other, gov other local government um, areas when the new council is in place to see what we can do to actually run a proper public campaign to knock this on the head. To the extent to which this, this um, professionalises the planning sector, great. But the extent to which it privatises it, danger, danger, danger. Thank you, Councillor Hender. Councillor Martin. Uh, yes, Lord Mayor, look, I also endorse uh, the comments of Councillor Wilkinson and Councillor Hender. I, I just wonder whether or not, though, the letter which accompanies the submission of our administration is sufficiently strong, particularly in the third part paragraph, where we actually say in that draft, Council is supportive of the aim to increase quality decision making in the planning system with a new accredited professional scheme. Now, that's not what the paper is saying, the paper is saying that we have grave doubts and therefore I believe that the letter ought to say that Council is not supportive of that scheme. Um, Lord Mayor, uh, I think there's uh, concern in the community uh, and uh, a str strongly worded letter to accompany that would satisfy the concerns of that community uh, who is witnessing basically the, uh, the throwing out of the uh, uh, the planning baby with the bath water. CEO, would you care to comment about the content of the cover letter versus the content of the report? Thanks, Shanti. Through the Lord Mayor, um, the intent uh, of indicating that third paragraph really is in support of the expert panel on planning reform. Uh, one of their recommendations was to professionalise the planning sector. And so that really is the intent uh, of that paragraph. And so the move to create an accreditation scheme, uh, in my opinion, will to a large extent drive that professionalisation of the sector per se. The concern around the privatisation of decision making, um, uh, as indicated on page 36, uh, is a concern, but the idea about making the system more professional uh, of development assess assessment uh, per se is actually uh, a good outcome, um, which I think this council should support. I still think it needs to be covered. Councillor Clarehan, thank you. Noted, Councillor Martin. 
Um, thank you. I just want to acknowledge the huge amount of work in this report that's been undertaken by our administration. And I noted the comment that, um, that the um, initial feedback that we provided uh, doesn't seem on the draft regulations, um, didn't appear to inform um, the result and the outcome of that. Could, could administration please comment on that, please? CEO. To the Lord Mayor, um, a, a draft document was released around April, May this year, um, to which uh, administration provided commentary back to DIPTI. Um, now that, um, together with a whole bunch of other feedback, was provided to DIPTI by a whole range of other sectors. Now that's not to say that uh, other feedback uh, may not have been taken on board, but we do note that the feedback that was initially provided by Council uh, does not appear to have been taken into account. Thank you. Um, that's, and that's a major concern, Lord Mayor. I mean, we are a capital city and we have huge responsibility in terms of um, development and public realm and public good. And the effort that goes into providing that feedback um, being, I mean, is, is remarkable, it's considerable and that not being taken on board, there are concerns. And I agree with you. I think the professionalisation um, of the sector is warranted and welcomed. Um, however, um, the privatisation of the scheme is concerning. And I also note the requirement for everyone on council caps to have uh, that professional accreditation, and yet it's not required of the State Commission, uh, the State Commission Assessment Panel. Can you comment on that? See you. Uh, through the Lord Mayor, that is indeed correct. Uh, I'm not able to comment on the rationale as to why that is the case, but I think it's reasonable that uh, if local government is required to have accredited professionals assessing development, whether it be staff or the CAP, that it would be entirely reasonable for the same standards to apply at state government level. Thank you. And, and I think, as you suggest, that um, the um, knowledge and professional uh, advice that council is able to provide in the assessment is absolutely considerable and, uh, and acknowledging the complexity of the situation of the planning decisions that we're confronted with. That worries me that these, um, this privatisation um, is going to overlook that. Uh, and also the potential for the professional accreditation not to be included at the top level with the more complex, more valuable um, applications is just absolutely absurd. Um, and just in one more note was the letter um, I noted was addressed to Mr Tim Anderson and obviously he stood down and we now need to address that letter to Mr Michael Lennon who over the years is no stranger to um, planning issues in, in South Australia but it's, it's been a huge amount of work and I must say I thank the administration for, for all that they've um, offered up. Thank you. Uh, members, before I hand you back to the mover of the motion, Councillor Wilkinson, members, you would be aware that on your behalf late last week, I, and in, in an associated or somewhat re uh, related matter, I was voicing my concern with regards to the, let's call it the lack of outcome when it comes to the North Adelaide Large Institutions and Colleges DPA, and I was expressing uh, our collective disappointment in previous and current state governments in terms of not addressing that matter and not addressing the concerns of our community. Councillor Wilkinson, summing up. Before summing up, question, administration. You can um, do so. Procedural question. Um, is it possible for the um, first sentence under, on page 36 of the privatisation of planning to be incorporated into the Lord Mayor's letter? Is that, is that, that's a fairly profound statement, one that I've read out. And that really should be in, in the letter. It shouldn't just be sort of having a letter that sort of indicates we've got a few reservations, but we should be expressing that that, that fundamental 
Council Member Smith, you're not supporting the privatisation. Members, can I do a litmus test of that, please, before I hand you to the CEO? Is there general comfort around that concept? CEO, would you care to comment on that, please? Yeah, we can incorporate that. Thanks. I don't need a motion. No, no. CEO, I'll take that instruction, Council. Thank you. Do you want to do a litmus test in the chamber? Um, <laughs> I, I thank um, uh, Councillor Hedges' uh, uh, comments. Um, and having been a development assessment planner for the City of Adelaide and um, being a Microphone, microphone please, Councillor. My uh, Having been a consultant on both sides of the, the fence, um, I certainly have witnessed the sort of um, uh, uh, professionalism or lack thereof that has been uh, uh, used in, 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 the, in the planning profession and it gives me those profound concerns about the dangers of privatisation of the planning, which is an instrument to protect the public good. Summed up. Thank you, Councillor. So, members, I put this matter before you for the vote. Those in favour? Those against? Item carried. Members, item 8.5, we see the election of Garrock representatives, which is you've got a recommendation to note and approve and authorise. Now, members, you have 13 potential candidates here for the uh, to be put forth uh, amongst other councils for Garrock. I'll just go to Councillor Clarehan first, if I may, Deputy Lord Mayor. You had your hand up prior to that. Um, thank Clarehan. you, Lord Mayor. I wish to declare a perceived conflict, given I'm president of the Local Government Association, and many of the people who have nominated for Garrock uh, are members of the board, or even um, some are on the honour, they're members of the board. So I will um, stay in the room, but I will not be voting. Thank you for advising your fellow elected members, Councillor Clarehan. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'd like to move a motion for the following eight councillors, which are thank you, which I provided to administration a bit earlier. Uh, those councillors being uh, Mayor Gillian Aldridge, uh, Mayor Kevin Knight, Councillor Mickey Boucher, Deputy Mayor Councillor Janet Bryan, um, Mayor Karen Redman, Deputy Mayor Councillor Jane, Jane Clear, we've got yet great Jane Clear Wisdom, Mayor David O'Loughlin, and Councillor Arthur Mangos. Okay, so on that basis, seconds. we would need to strike out the five which were not mentioned. Kylie, do you, you've done that? Thank you. So that's actually, that's accurately reflected. Seconded by Councillor Moran. The floor is yours, Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, I'll reserve my right. Councillor Moran, do you wish to speak to this matter? No, I don't. Okay. Members, I look for you. Councillor Wilkinson. Uh, was um, Councillor Crystal Max in that um, list or read out? No, I'm not sure. I think that she would be uh, a good person to, uh, to be supporting on this. So, um, um, Lord Mayor, if, <laughs> if, if uh, there was a, a, a change a to uh, a substitution. Councillor, let me assist you here. Um, the Procedurally, the best way to do this, because members, as you can see, I would prefer not this matter. I do. It's very um, uh, difficult procedurally to take this matter to a ballot. That's why we're doing it as a motion. Um, Councillor, you may want to suggest a, um, a swap, so to speak, between one and the other as a variation. You then need to look to the Deputy Lord Mayor, who's a member of the motion, to agree, and then I'll look to the seconder, Councillor Brown. Just make out, Mickey. Okay. Substitute. Oh, thank you. Okay, so Councillor, what have we just done? We are inserting Councillor Crystal Nex, and we are, Councillor Moran, please, and we are deleting which member? Okay, three. Okay. So, Deputy Lord Mayor, do you accept that as a variation to your motion? I do, Lord Mayor. Thank Councilor you. Councillor Moran, do you accept that as a very motion? I look for general comfort from the room members. Members, members, general comfort on that variation. Do I have it? I need a majority. You're asking the crystal. Yes, councillors. 
I do, okay, I'll take that as majority members. Do I have any further debate on this matter, members? Okay, Deputy Lord Mayor, back to you. Uh, up, Lord Mayor. Members, I put this item, which is 8.5, before you for the vote. Those in favour? Those against? 8.5 is carried. Members, our CEO is continuing his unblemished record. There are, no, there are no emerging key risks, so I take you on to questions on notice, which is item nine. There are nil. Members, I look to you. Are there any questions without notice? Item 10 on the agenda. Councillor Martin, question without notice. Yes, Lord Mayor. On Friday, uh, the advertiser reported that the state government would be blocking off the streets of Adelaide, which are notionally under the control of the city of Adelaide, to trial autonomous vehicles. Um, my question is, was this an autonomous government decision uh, or could the administration outline the role it played in that decision? CEO. Beth, can you answer that, thanks? Uh, through you, Lord Mayor. Um, the, it's a one-off uh, trial, which the state government did flag with us um, for that. I've just got to remember, I can't remember the streets now. It's um, Flinders, Wakefield, Gawler, and I can't remember the bottom of the square. Um, so a once-off trial, which um, they did seek approval from City of Adelaide, and they'll then give us the outcomes of that trial, and as per our e-news, we'll then report those and any future implications back to Council. Uh, I, I'm fine with that. I just wonder whether we could have advice of these things before we read them in the newspaper. That would be really good. Thank you, Councillor Martin. I echo that sentiment. Members, do I have any further questions without notice? Councillors, no further questions without notice? Councillor Moran, you have a question without notice? <laughs> uh, yes, I move a question without notice on the board. I actually wanted to move a motion, but I'd forgotten it was caretaker mode. Uh, will the CA provide a report to the new council on the potential to partner with the state government to create an inclusive place, spa, uh, park, space park in memory and named after, I think I'd like to put in, um, Queen McKinnahan. Um, I know, I, just to explain that question, I suggested it on the radio and uh, the, uh, the Premier has quickly grabbed that as a state initiative to work with us. Um, we've got, we've got a, a playground already designed for down at Rymel Park, it's inclusive. And I think it would be nice to get some help from the government to pay for it. And uh, we should name it the Quentin Kinahan Memorial Playground. Well, thank you. We'll take that as a question. Now, members, you would also be cognizant that we have a motion on our books moved by Councillor Abiyad in 2017, thereabouts, I believe, which was to talk about inclusive play spaces in our forward planning for our play spaces throughout the parklands, if my memory serves me correctly. Um, in answer to Councillor Moran's question, CEO. Yeah, through you, Lord Mayor, I'm aware of the situation, I'm aware of the sentiment of Council, um, and so we will be providing a report early on in the new Council term. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Members, I have no further questions without notice. Councillor Abia. Can we, um, just with regards to this, can the administration provide just briefly a report? I believe uh, there was some type of consultation done with uh, late Mr Kenahan on the playground already. Is that the case? And what's the progress of that motion with regards to the playground? Because there's already been some work done on that about a year ago. Thank you, Councillor Rabia. CEO. Claire, you've been doing some work on that, thanks. Um, through the Lord Mayor, um, yes, yeah, since that motion, we provided a report last year which outlined uh, the work we had done to date with Quentin and with his input in terms of reviewing all the playgrounds in the city to ensure ex as much accessible features as possible. Um, also in relation to the original motion which asked us to look at putting a fully accessible playground within Ronald Park, and that's been picked up through the master plan work, um, but also work with the existing women's and children's hospital around um, some potential sensory or tactile type parkland treatments down there to help support children who um, you know, have the need to go to the hospital. So all that work's been underway. But I'm happy to provide more detail uh, to council members um, following the meeting. Councillor Abiyad, satisfied? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, members. 
Members, without further questions, without notice, I will take you on to motions on notice, which is items 11, of which we have nil. Motions without notice? I don't have any. Members, I, as you know, members, our last council meeting of this term will in fact be Tuesday week, which will be the 23rd of October. And I extend an open invitation to all councillors who are not seeking re-election for the next term of council, should they wish to speak at that next council meeting, which would be your last council meeting, you have an invitation to do so, please contact me directly <laughs> and I'll make sure. However, Councillor Maloney, I understand, is unable to attend <coughs> that last meeting on the 23rd. <laughs> so I have afforded Councillor Maloney um, some time to do her closing remarks, so to speak, after eight years on council. Councillor Maloney, the floor is yours. Thank you, Lord Mayor, and thank you to the Chamber for allowing me to address you tonight. It's been um, a privilege and honour to serve the local community for the past eight years. It started in 2010 for me when I was passionate about the redevelopment of Adelaide Oval. That was one of the triggers that enticed me to run for council. I ran a simple campaign and I was pleased to be elected. A change in my life that turned out to be very positive. Being re-elected in 2014 was even more special. The feeling that the community had recognised that I was fitting to hold office for a second term was even more humbling. It's a great privilege to be elected once. It's even greater privilege to be re-elected, as I'm sure many of my fellow councillors that had, have experienced this would agree. That validation was personally very um, important for me. As I sit in the chamber tonight, as the last time as an elected member, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the many people that I've met and the friendships I've made. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank my fellow elected members for this term and the term prior. I also take, the, sorry, excuse me, I take the opportunity to thank the administration, the CEO and the team. It's been a great privilege to work for you, I work with you and I've made many friendships. And even as I uh, announced that I wasn't seeking re-election, it's been great to have a chat to the staff and, and um, they've been wonderful and very positive, so I really appreciate that. I thank the mentors that I've had, and there's lots that I would, um, too many to mention, um, in particular the late Mike Marble Hill from Prospect City Council, uh, who really got me going on, on my election campaign in the very beginning. Thank you to my parents, my mum sitting in the gallery tonight, first time I think in eight years, uh, but uh, lovely to have you here. They supported me beyond words through both election campaigns and have been supporting me ever since and I couldn't have done it without them, so thank you. Um, it's funny now that uh, I'm not seeking re-election, everyone's come up to me and said, what are you going to do with all this time on your hands? And I'm thinking, I don't know about this time that I have on my hands, but there's definitely a part of me that's going to miss this role. And I'm passionate about supporting new people in the city to have this opportunity. And I believe it's my time to move on and focus on my business. So what I'll miss, I'll miss the camaraderie, the meeting and speaking to many wonderful people, decision making and making a difference. What I won't miss is reading all those hundreds of pages of agendas and all that paperwork. Uh, but what will never leave me is my passion for this city and its people. I did a little brief summary of some personal highlights. Being Deputy Lord Mayor was obviously one, one of them um, and I'm honoured to have that role. The acquisition of 88 O'Connell Street and I look forward to leaving that in the hands of the next council and the community. The MOU with the City of Jaipur based on a smart city agenda which is now converted into a pilot traffic management um, plan, a trial of traffic management. Building the relationship with, uh, building on the relationship with Georgetown Penang. Three year sponsorship agreements. Changing our name to the City of Adelaide. Don't tell Anne. Planning the early stages of the central market redevelopment. Giving the keys to the City of Adelaide to Jill Rolton and Mike Churcher. Chairing various committees and re representing councils on numerous boards, including the Capital City Committee. Gawler Place, a legacy for our busiest street in the city. The Smart City Agenda. I've talked to KPIs, I think I even may have got a nickname um, out of that, but passionate about K KPIs. And I've dealt with a lot of grassroots issues. 
I believe I've taken a common sense approach to most decision making on this council, even though some people may disagree, of course. I've been a strong advocate for business. And one of the greatest highlights was building relationships with many, many, many different people throughout the city. So thank you again to my fellow elected members. Enjoy the next few weeks and the last council meeting for Sue and to Megan and David and Alex. Thank you, Lord Mayor, for your service and support. Uh, thank you again to the administration. I wish all candidates all the best for the upcoming election. And I wish all the best to the council 2018 to 2022. Thank you. Members, can I have a move that that be adopted for the record? Moved by Councillor Clarehan, seconded by Councillor Slama. All in favour? Those against? We carry. Congratulations and well said, Councillor Mulaney. And thank you on behalf of all of us for your service to the City of Adelaide over the last eight years. Well done. Members, we now go to into conference. Um, we have items 14.1 and 14.2 which need to be contemplated in confidence, most specifically item 14.2.1. So I need a mover for both. Can I have a mover to move those items into confidence? Moved by Councillor Slama for 14.1, seconded by. <laughs> Councillor Hender, thank you. Any debate about moving 14.1, which is CEO, you may be able to assist me here, actually. Confidential report of the Adelaide City Council Audit Committee, nil, but it's still on the confidential items list. We're not probably doing anything with regards to that matter, if that would be correct. Jenny? No. So, all right, I'm just going to move 14.2. So, Councillor Slama, would you like to move 14.2, which is the Capital City Committee report? Thank you. Councillor Hender? Seconding? Any debate? I'm put that before you. Those in favour? Those against? 14.2 carried into confidence. Could we please close the chamber and any parties not directly associated with Simon, can we ask you to kindly leave the chamber?
formally close it on your behalf. That was, that was one of Councillor Martin's defibrillators. Okay, we're recording. Okay, members, this meeting is now back in public. It is 7.06 p.m. and I'll formally call it closed. I will thank you for your contribution for our second to last council meeting of this term. CEO to you and your team. Thank you very much. Meeting formally closed. Thank you.